whether it's physically manhandling his defender on the block, or just simply going old school by hitting mid-range jump shots. That's gone a long way as West. David West was a monster. In my opinion, this dude was the ultimate epitome of grind and grace. I mean, like I said earlier, he can punish you by flexing his muscles inside the paint. Duncan dumps it in. West trying to get away. No, he just and he can also hurt you with his smooth stroke. He's getting his favorite area. He could have gotten it down four. Now, some may be calling his game boring and outdated in the standard of the modern NBA, but let me just remind you that this guy has been selected to be part of the All-Star team twice, is a two-time champ, and let's just say that these awards are just the tip of the iceberg. All right, enough of the hype, let's get down to business. In this video, allow me to share with you the humble beginnings as well as the high points of the legendary career of David West. David Moore West was born on August 29, 1980 and grew up in Teaneck, New Jersey. His blue-collar attitude and no-nonsense approach to the game can be attributed to his hard-working parents who worked round the clock to provide for their four children. His dad, Amos, worked as a mailman throughout Bergen County and also had a couple of side gigs which included working as a postal supervisor in the Army Reserve, a deacon, a Sunday school superintendent, and a radio DJ. Meanwhile, his mother, Harriet, also worked at the post office with his dad, but when the clock struck five, she would immediately return home to cater to her children's needs. Whenever the West visited their friends and relatives in North Carolina, Amos would be the one who'd wake up early in the morning to cut the grass and set up a basketball hoop just so David could shoot some hoops. And once he had done this, his father would hunt rabbits for supper later that day. His brother Dwayne was also one of the influential figures that David looked up to in terms of his basketball journey, as Dwayne was already an established Division III hooper playing for the Jersey City State College by the time he was born. When it's game day, Dwayne would tag his little brother along, and he finally remembers this memory in an interview that he had. Me dragging him along to my games, and having him cry on the sideline. I couldn't play in peace because he wanted to go to the bathroom. When David was a bit older, Dwayne also served as his mentor as he would teach him some tricks from his playbook and instill it into his post game. Every time Dwayne yelled out, one, that meant a drop step, two, drop step and half hook, three, drop step, fake, and shoot. And to polish his jumper even more at home, his dad put up a backboard and a rim in the backyard driveway that had the most space. I'm pretty sure this is where David developed that sweet elbow jumper, which was basically his bread and butter. Some years later, his family would permanently move from New Jersey to Carolina, where David attended Garner Magnet for the first two years of high school. At school, David had a hard time meeting new friends and eventually his grades plummeted because he struggled to adjust to the new environment that he was in. To keep up academically, David began to lose interest in playing basketball as he solely focused his efforts on studying. But as soon as he drifted apart from playing hoops, David underwent an insane growth spurt, jacking up his height from 5'10 to 6'5 just over the course of a summer before his sophomore year. Despite all this, David remained away from the hardwood, but all that changed when the school head coach noticed his towering presence wandering the hallways and finally convinced him to pursue basketball as a career. He began to train day and night to improve his game, and there were times where his coach would lock all six doors of the gym and just left him alone inside to work on his skills and conditioning. Garner High's principal, Drew Cook, was easily impressed by David's work ethic at such an early age as well as his demeanor on and off the court. I've never seen anybody with a motor that runs like this. He was a happy, good-natured guy off the court, but he was a leader. He'd come by the bench during games and say to take so-and-so out of the game or to get on him. At this point, his play style of being a banger that's pillared with strong and sound fundamentals began to take shape. To increase his opportunity to be recruited by more well-known Division I schools, David later transferred to Hargrave Military Academy in Virginia and continued to play his game as an undersized bruiser. Though he would play solidly in terms of stats and effort, most scouts would look the other way because of his unusual size of the four spot, plus the fact that he wasn't as athletic as the other kids his age. I didn't play like a lot of other guys, the way guys were trending. I wasn't a high flyer, I wasn't a very outspoken player, I didn't walk around with a lot of bravado, a lot of machismo. I was one of those guys who slid under the radar. Studying at Hargrave though, paid dividends for David, 
not only for his basketball journey, but also in building his character as a person. The military discipline that the school strictly imposed has helped David to be a diligent student as well as responsible, and a disciplined athlete at the same time. After performing superbly inside and outside of the court, David was offered a Division I scholarship from an Xavier assistant coach after seeing him in the Charlie Weber tournament, and soon after that, David was already manning the paint for the Musketeers in the spring of 1999. As a rookie in Xavier, David was named to the Atlantic 10 All-Rookie Team after hauling 9.1 boards a ball game and finished fourth in scoring for the team with 11.7. And for the next three years, David would steadily increase his scoring output as he would rack up several individual accolades and break records along the way while establishing himself as a premier double-double machine. He used his double-double stat numbers as a calling card for the Super Stack 2003 NBA Draft, and fortunately, the New Orleans Hornets rung him up and nabbed him as their 18th overall pick. The New Orleans Hornets select David West from Xavier University. After a so-so performance in the first two years in New Orleans, West had a breakthrough in his junior year, courtesy of the arrival of the point god, Chris Paul. In that particular season, West averaged 17.1 points, 7.4 rebounds, while shooting 51.2% from the field. The shot now clearing out across the baseline. He has really struggled to turn over. David West trying to get to the rim. Did exactly that around Pau Gasol. His partnership with CP3 brought three postseason appearances for the franchise, and it was also around that time that he would be nominated to back-to-back all-star appearances by averaging over 20 points a ball game while grabbing almost nine boards a game. His next stop would be in Indiana, where he would team up with Danny Granger, a young Paul George, and the LeBron's best friend, Lance Stevenson. This blowing in the ear of LeBron James and James' reaction, <laughs> he, can't, he can't believe it. Though his production dropped compared to his playing days with the Hornets, West became an important piece of the Pacers roster that went to two straight Eastern Conference Finals. Sit down, and Indiana is back on top. Here's David West with the left strong. Oh, and one! Well, right now, West... As he readjusts his lineup, West goes to the hole, gets his own, and West finishes at the rim. Anyway, moving on here. For those of you guys who have no idea, West is well-read and loves to devour any type of subject matter, whether it's sports, politics, and even philosophy. His former teammate, Paul George, revealed this side of him in an interview some few years back and also talked about his tremendous basketball IQ and subtle leadership whenever he's on the floor. He's an intelligent dude. For myself, being a young player, he coaches me through everything. What's going on in the news, what's going on in other sports, stocks. He just speaks knowledge all day. When I'm on the court, he just tells me to slow down, play my game. That's easy to say, but that really sticks out a lot. You watch him play, he takes his time. He's not the most athletic guy, but he gets the job done. When he tells me that, to be patient and play your own game, that's what got me confident right now. After playing 13 ringless seasons between splitting his time in New Orleans and Indiana, West decided to play for less money, but on a team with championship aspirations, the San Antonio Spurs. Now we can. David just got it with 13 points, 10 in the third quarter. Though he wasn't able to win a championship with the Spurs, he finally got what he was looking for when he signed with the Warriors in 2016, where he won two championships back to back. For Lillard, 12 of the 17 here in the second quarter, and West and left. David West! Finally, after 15 seasons playing in the league, David West officially announced that he'd be stepping away from the game for good on August 30th, 2018. Outside of the NBA hardwood, West has always been active in reaching out to those who are in need and frequently voicing out his sentiments about social issues that the world is currently facing. And to end this video on a positive note, here are some encouraging and inspiring words coming from the man of the hour. I'm just not going to be the typical NBA guy. I'm not just going to let myself become a part of that. I'm always going to stand up and I'm always going to stand apart from this group that I don't necessarily feel like I identify with wholly. If you're living and you're not doing things for other people, then you're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. Keep myself in reality is what I like to call it. 
I think a lot of times in the NBA, you can get caught in this lifestyle and what the NBA has to offer. It's ego-driven, self-driven, I, me. And we all have to have some of that in order to get here, but you can't just let that consume you and let that become a part of who you are. So I try to keep it cool. I try to keep everything in perspective. Way to go, David, for keeping it real. Anyway, have y'all ever heard of the story of Sean Livingston? Well, just like with David West, he comes from the humble beginnings and fought tooth and nail to get his station in his life. It's stories like these that inspire me a ton, and the great news is you can watch the video right here. It's a big video, guys, and I seriously don't want to spoil anything for you. So just go ahead, click the video, and like always, I'll be on the other side.